individual level, you will find. Uh, and Allah says this in the Quran. There's from people from the book of, from the people of the book. If you give them a lot of wealth, they'll they'll give it back to you. So Allah says, from them are good and from them are bad. But generally, uh, the level of corruption has not permeated to the extent that it has in the Muslim lands. And that's a very serious indictment of the Muslims. Because our experience, most of us who've traveled in the Muslim world, we experience this and it's quite devastating. So I'll end this by hope for the future because we're hopeful. And we all have to be because we're Muslim. And the hadith that diagnoses our disease, which is also once the disease is diagnosed, is an indication of what the cure is. And, and the cure is also mentioned in another hadith. The hadith is related by Abu Naim, and it's from Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. And there are many versions of it, but this one is, is interesting. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said, Antum al-yawm arabiyyinatim min rabbikum ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna an al-munkar wa tujahiduna fi sabiri Allah thumma tadharu fikum as-sakratan You today are on clear proof from your Lord. You command to good and you forbid evil and you struggle in the way of Allah tujahiduna fi sabiri Allah and then there will manifest in you these two very serious symptoms of impending doom. Sakratul jahal, ignorance, wa sakrat hubb al and the disease of love, of livelihood, of dunya. وَسَتُحَوَّلُونَ عَنْ ذَٰلِكَ فَلَا تَأْمُرُونَ بِمَعْرُوفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَوْنَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ وَلَا تُجَاهِدُونَ فِي اللَّهِ الْقَائِمُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِالْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ لَهُ أَجْرُ خَمْسِينَ سُدِّيقًا قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مِنَّا أَوْ مِنْهُمْ قَالَ لَا بَلْ مِنْكُمْ وأخرج الأحمد والبزار أبو نعيم الحاكم بسند صحيح يوشك أن يملأ الله أيديكم من العجم ويجعلهم أسدا لا يفرون فيقتلون مقاتركم ويأكلون فيأكم You will soon be taken over by the, the, the عجم and they will be like lions that don't flee from you and they will fight the way you fight and they'll eat from your booty and this is also an indication of the force who became Muslim and the other Muslims because he was speaking primarily to the Arab contingency um, but there's another hadith which is that يُشِكُ أَنْ تَدَعَ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أُمَمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أُفَقٍ كَمَا تَدَعَ الْأَكَرَةُ إِلَى قَصَعَتِهَا قِيلِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ فَمِنْ قِلَّةٍ مِنَّ يَوْمَ إِذَنْ قَالَ لَا وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاء كغثاء السَّيْلِ يَجْعَلَ الْوَهْنُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُجْعَلَ الْوَهْنُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَيُنْزِعَ الرَّعْبُ مِنْ قُلُوبِ عَدُوِّكُمْ لِحُبِّكُمْ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَتِكُمْ الْمَوْتِ that it's coming a time when the Jews and the Christians as interpreted in the other hadith will come from every ufuq, from every horizon and they will eat from you, from your plate like eaters eat from a plate and they said, Ya Rasulullah, is it from that we're few in numbers? they said, no, but you're like scum, the foam on the top of the flow and there's a weakness in your hearts and fear is taken out of the hearts of your enemies and the reason for this, لِحُبِّكُمْ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَتِكُمْ الْمَوْتِ Because you love dunya and you, you, you hate death. Very simple diagnosis. Which means that the cure then are two things. One is the jahl has to be removed. And every single Islamic renaissance, if you study the history of Islam, began with intellectual renaissance. And you show me one that did not. Because the very first Islam began with Darul Arqam. It began in Mecca, in a house, with one man, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, teaching men and women Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and removing from their hearts love of dunya. And Umar said to the Persians, we will send an army, the love of death with them is just is greater than your love of life. 
And this comes from knowledge because the more knowledge one gains, and we're not talking about ma'lumat, information. There's orientalists that learn all the rules. That's not real knowledge. There are orientalists that know Islam. They can lecture about Islam. They can tell you everything. They can give you the aqidah of the Muslims. They can tell all these things. But in the end, they do not believe. So it is not real knowledge. Real knowledge is of two types. One is a knowledge in which one is limited in their intellectual understandings, but the knowledge penetrates their heart. This is Ibn Rajab al-Hambari. And the second is where they join the two. They have the outward and the inward as well. And these are the people that are the leaders, the hudya of Allah in his land. And the third type is somebody who knows the outward, but it doesn't penetrate the inward. And that's called a hypocrite. And they're the ones that the Prophet ﷺ feared more than anybody. And finally, the last thing that I'll uh, leave you with is, I think, a very powerful statement by an American who's talking about the disease of the autonomy of man. Solzhenitsyn, uh, the Russian, said that the modern Western mindset can be understood as humanistic autonomy. Man transgresses in that he deems himself independent of Allah. And these people now deem themselves independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, according to this man, Sultan Yitzin says, is an autonomy of man from any higher force above him. Commenting on this, if superior forces are not allowed, current epistemology has no way to register them. I have argued then, human life has no alternative but to appear autonomous. In other words, if we deny the material, the spiritual influences in our lives, because they only look at the outward, and we look, when we look at and analyze things, we keep in mind vahir and batin. We keep in mind both aspects, the outwardly manifest and the inwardly hidden. They are only looking at the outward. They do not see the inward. And so, because of that, there's no alternative but to appear autonomous. The human being is autonomous. There's nothing behind all of this. If we were surprised to find Sultan Yitzhak blaming his pres this presumed autonomy for the fact that the Western world has lost its civic courage, a fact which cannot be disputed is the weakening of human personality in the West. Look at, seriously, look at uh, the, the people that are being produced in these cultures. He tells us it is because mechanists we have largely and unconsciously become. We assume that if superior forces exist, they would tyrannize. We take their absence to be liberating. So we deny that there's anything superior to us, and we see that if there was, it would only be a tyranny over us. It would be a tyranny over us. This is very important. It would be a tyranny over us. It seems not to occur to us that such forces might empower us and liberate us. Submission in Arabic Islam was the very name of the religion that surfaced through the Qur'an. Yet its entry into history occasioned the greatest political explosion the world has known. That's the outward he's looking at. Where did the, the, the power and the impetus of that political explosion, where did it come from? the unseen forces. If mention of this fact automatically triggers our fears of fanaticism, says the Western reader, Islam exploded onto the world. Those were those crazy Saracens, the fanatics. Here's what he says. This simply shows us another defense our agnostic reflexes has erected against the possibility of there being something that better than we are in every respect could infuse us with goodness as well as power were we open to the transfusion. See, what he's saying is, is that if you look at Islam and what it brought and the civilization that it created and the dignity of man that it established, the educations, the traditions, the institutes, the, the artifacts of their, the remnants of those cultures are sold for massive amounts of money because these people, the rich people in this culture want to have them ornamenting their houses. Right? You see, this is, this is, Islam is powerful. It's transformative. 
It is transformative, and it can transform every single one of us if we're open to it. At the individual level, all of us have to make an absolute commitment to studying our deen, to studying it in, in, its, in, in its most uh, comprehensive and broad-based orthopraxic tradition. In other words, the parameters are broad within limits. We don't go outside of those limits. But the Muslims traditionally have had differing views, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed that, given us different ways to, to practice our faith and to understand it within generous guidelines of our messenger. So inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make us people of this deen and, and people of the level of this deen. And I ask forgiveness if I went on for some time with Zakim al-Khair and